All right, guys, so I don't know what made me want to go, but I was sitting inside watching some YouTube videos, checking up, up on my channel, and I decided, you know what? Let's go to the lake. Hope I'm not making a bad choice by this, but I want to go ahead and just hit Norse Lake. It's convenient for me, and I can get there sort of fast. I don't have to worry about you know wasting a lot of gas. I'm gonna grab a few things and head on that way and we'll hopefully hopefully catch a few before it gets dark. It is right now it's 4.30, so we still got quite a while. Alright, well, surprisingly, it's pretty much just me here. I mean, no one else in the parking lot? How else better it could be? We got one guy putting up his boat right now. And then it's just gonna be me, I guess. So we'll see what we can get into. A little windy. or here with this wind blowing I had a subscriber so I had a subscriber sent me a message the other day which I was you know asking for some tips on what I could do for my channel and one of the things that he had mentioned was you know sort of talk more about what you're doing and so forth and so on so I'm going to let you guys fill you guys in sort of what I'm doing um, I have not fished this, these waters like I said really much at all but I'm sort of going to do sort of what I was doing on Mount Hill yesterday I want to find some points like this right here and this has got this has got a rocky bank as well that runs down in the water I, I gotta check what the depth is in here in a second but I'm gonna fish that with this crankbait right here and this one right here is a fat free shad so I'm gonna fish that I got 15 pound test on which is actually probably a little too heavy um, but given I don't even have a I don't have a crankbait rod right now that's something I want to get next but anyways guys we're gonna try this out and we'll see how we do we're in 20 foot of water as well but it shallows up as you get around this corner there's a point that runs out i'm actually not out on the point yet but here's the it runs all the way out and it comes out about that like sort of that direction right there so. just start off is this right here next to the boat launch where i started off at try it out and this is either i'm not 100 sure i've had this lure forever it's actually a um it's a bill dance lure which is pretty cool but it's either a 5 or 6 XD. I'm not sure exactly what. Kobe says it's a 6 XD. It actually might be. I was thinking more along the lines of like 4 or 5, but not 100% sure on that. Try to cast out. See, what I'm hoping for is it's still pretty early in the day. I'm hoping that some of these fish are staging out here on the edges of these pockets. And as the evening you know closes in, they're gonna start moving up to feed on you know the shad or um, bluegill, whatever it may be. So water temps are who golly, water temps are 78 degrees here. So it's definitely a whole lot hotter hotter here than at some of the other local lakes I've been fishing. This lake is very 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 clear. Um, not only is it a deep lake, but it's also very clear and there's actually not a lot of current um, Not until you run further up north going up the clinch or Powell River um, as far as As far as this area though, this is the Lewiston area um, It's actually just a pretty much just a settle Settle lake there ain't really much that runs off of it. You got some creeks that run out um, nothing like what you'd have like on chick or Fort Loudon, but just some smaller creeks mainly on this lake you're fishing you're either if you're fishing shallow you're either fishing pockets or you're fishing little creeks that run out and then outside of that you're you're fishing ledges and deep humps um, that's mainly what you fish on this lake just depends on the time of year right now we're probably getting ready to transition we're transitioning to the summer bot so early morning top water probably up to shallows and after that you pretty much fall what you want to do is you want to follow out the um, shaded banks fish that as long as you can and then after that then you start fishing deep whether you're fishing humps or you're fishing big steep ledges um, rock clay just depends on the day all right let's head somewhere else 
this spot wasn't really like i said i haven't fished this lake in a while but that spot was just right there at the ramp so i gave it a try <laughs> Numeral dose number two. Now, since you guys last seen me fish this lake, the water has risen a butt load. I mean, when I say a lot, um, I'm talking like pretty much 10 feet above above full pool. So the water has came down probably five or six feet since then, but it's still I haven't checked lately, but uh it's either still four or five feet above or it's right on full pool i mean we're right up in the trees and what really sucks is that really from my guess that's, that's probably really messed up the spawn on the fish this year last year me and kobe had a lot of luck on this lake because they waited until after the spawn before they ever actually raised up the water and that helped a lot for those fish you know because what happens a lot of times is the fish will come into the shallows when the water's down the plant their you know do their do their thing put their bed down everything and then all of a sudden halfway through it they'll raise the lake you know five six ten feet and then that that bed is just you know 10 15 foot in the water um and i'm afraid that's what they've done this year this lake is mainly known for its smallmouth. we've caught in a lot a lot of four four and a half pound largemouth right here um and then uh I think that yeah the tournament you guys saw earlier this year our first tournament of the year episode one kobe caught two really good smallmouth that helped put us into the tournament um so yeah this lake's this lake's covered with smallmouth like i said it's got a lot of little creeks that run in and those smallmouth like to like to stage up on those creek those creeks and if you can find them even during the summertime when it's real hot um you can catch a lot of smallmouth doing that so if anything, this video today, guys, is going to be probably more in informational than it will be me catching fish. Uh, if anything, I hope I can just give you guys some tips on, you know, what to do in certain situations. Um, I, uh, like I said, I have not fished this lake that much, and the where well, this water came up so fast, it, it ruined it ruined the fishing out here, guys. What was happening is when the fish were spawning or whatever. Um, the water was all the way up into the trees and you couldn't even get you couldn't even get your baits back up in there to even catch them and then the water heated up and now we're you know 78 degrees and those fish are starting to drop off into the deeper water with this water being clear like it is and no vegetation they have nowhere else to go Got one. what is that is that a gar I got a freaking gar, guys. Yep. That's probably what hit it earlier. Wow. I'm going to at least net this so I can get him out. Well, got a gar. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder if that's what swapped at it and meant gun missed. Probably was. Check your line. Anytime you get a guard, check your line. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. In case you guys don't know, viewers who are watching, the guard do have teeth. That's why I netted him. So always be careful around those. Anytime you're doing gar, walleye, pike, musky, any of those teeth guys, yeah. You see guys all the time reaching their hands down in the water and grabbing them. But uh, I ain't about to take that kind of chance. I'll get him out of the water, then I'll grab him. Get him out of his, uh, his territory, put him in mine. All right, let's try this. It 
there's different ways of working this bait. A lot of people will just sit there and reel and sort of just bob it a little bit above the, like on the bottom. But what I like to do is I like to just hold my tip of my rod up and just bob, oh, that was a fish right there. Just bob my, the tip of my rod just the whole time. Just, and that tail's just sitting here doing this in the water. Fish just hit it. Got one. Told you. Can't tell what he is, but he's fighting good. Oh gosh, he's fighting real good. Where's he at? Oh, it's a good, that's a catfish? I got a stupid catfish. Species challenge continues. <laughs> oh goodness. Now I just gotta figure out how to get it get him out of this thing. Well, that was probably one of the worst releases ever, but uh, about a three pound catfish right there. And my hands stink. <sighs> Caught him on a shaky head. Are you kidding me? Oh goodness. Man, that sucks. I thought that was gonna be a huge small mouth. He was fighting hard. Was it fighting like catfish usually do? Catfish will usually just be like dead weight. But I mean, he was actually, he was actually throbbing the whole time. But yeah, just sitting there, just bobbing the tip of the rod. First cast, hooking to about a three pound small, or three pound catfish. There's another gar in the water. Well, I think I've about given up on catching bass today. I think this is gonna be a species day. <laughs> oh, my line's taking off. Oh, that's a, he's fighting hard. That's a, that's a small mouth. He's coming to the boat. Oh, that's a good large mouth. No, it's a good smallmouth. Come on. Come to, come to me. Come to me. Golly. That's a really good smallmouth. There we go. As soon as I said, never mind, hook into this sucker. Heck yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good smallmouth. Let's weigh that one. Let's see. Oh. Dang it, Kobe. Well, never mind on that, guys. I'll get a picture of it real quick. Kobe has the scale. One last look at that. It's pretty nice. I'm gonna let her go. This is just an example of what I was talking about. About the fish on, this, on the smallmouth on this lake. Good. Guys, I think we made the perfect switch. What I'm using is a shaky head 
with about a four inch uh, robo worm. And this is actually Kobe's robo worms off right now of mine. Don't worry, Kobe. I'll get you back, buddy. <laughs> we'll for sure be using these probably during a tournament, so I'll be buying up quite a bit of them. But two cast, two fish. Or no, three cast, three fish. Or three cast, two fish. If I can never say that right. Wow. And that was a good smallmouth. <laughs> I literally had just said that I was giving up on catching bass. And look what happened. So let me say that again. I guess I'm giving up on catching bass for today. Yep, just went off. There was a drop off there. Oh. Got a fish hitting it. Got one. Oh, it's small. Wow. <laughs> well, it is a, a smallmouth. Come on, calm down, buddy. If you calm down so I can grab you. Calm down. <laughs> oh, I hate little fish. Oh, dang. How did that happen? So, I think I'm actually starting to figure out something here about these fish. I am using, they're not wanting to, they're not really wanting baits that are moving around a lot. They're wanting something that's more subtle. And so what I'm using is a, I have a uh, Okuma spinning reel with a six foot six medium action field in the stream. And then I'm using 10 pound test fluorocarbon, which is the Seaguar red label, along with a 3 16 ounce shaky head, which is what I'm using, right, what I'm tying on right here. And then a, um, to end it off with, using a robo worm. But uh, that's what I'm getting them with. Pro's about to go dead, but it's dark anyways, you guys can't really see. So wasn't really the most uh how to put this, wasn't really the best fishing trip as far as catching fish, but I do hope that this video was pretty informational. I want to go ahead and post it just for that reason. And you know, I caught a pretty good smallmouth and just it sort of it was sort of funny anyways, just with the with the catfish and then the um what was it? with the catfish and what else did I catch? The gar, that was it. So anyways, I'm gonna, I just randomly, what made me wanna stop fishing was I got hung up on something and uh, I was fishing a Texas rig and it's all of a sudden I yanked up, tried to get it off and the hook like came off, the knot's still there but the hook came off somehow. The knot was still there, which is really weird and the sinker slung back and hit the boat and of course the sinker popped off because it's bigger than the knot. But the knot is still tied on to the very end and actually, see if you guys can, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a knot right here. Do you can see that? It's still there. So I don't know, it's weird. 
But anyways, guys, hope you do enjoy this video and may post another one later on this week. Not sure, but anyways, guys, thank you.